All right, welcome to Plug and Pay, which is a talk show where we invite payroll professionals from all around the world to talk with us about interesting, thought-provoking topics that are shaping the global payroll world today. My name is Mark Oliver Fiedler. I'm the founder and CEO of Payzer. I'm the host of the show. We release new episodes every couple of weeks, and you can find them on our LinkedIn page, on our YouTube channel, or on any of the major podcast sites. For today's episode, I'm super excited to have Katinka Slyfus with us today. Katinka, welcome to the show. Um, great, great to have you on. I know you and I have spoken a little bit in the past and gotten to know each other. Um, and I think you have a very interesting background. Um, so maybe we'll just get started by having you tell us a bit about yourself, your background, uh, what you're up to today, and then we'll take it from there. Absolutely. Hi, everyone. Hi, Mark Oliver. Nice to be here. Happy to be here. Um, my name is Katinka. Uh, I am uh, living in Utrecht, the Netherlands. I'm based from the Netherlands. Uh, I live there with my wife and my 14-month baby girl. Um, after work, I would like to rewind by chasing after my 14-month-old baby girl. Uh, or watch some TV uh, or read a book. I love crime novels just to get my brain to think about something else than global payroll processes and numbers and, and things like that. Um, which, is, which can also be detective work, right? So, or, 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 or crime stories, depending on how you think about it, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm more into the, you know, the, de the detective shows and the, the crime novels. And um, I have, um, there is a series, The Alphabet uh, Mysteries, uh, it follows a private I, private uh, detective, um, right. and it starts with A, and it ends with Y, because unfortunately the writer passed away, so she couldn't finish the Z. But uh, oh, no. I, I'm uh, I'm now with, uh, on the letter R, so I'm almost I'm almost through the alphabet. <laughs> but uh, no, it's really it's really rewinding myself and um, getting some some yeah. other train of, train of thought in my mind. Uh, that's a little bit about myself, uh, about my career. Uh, I've been in payroll now for about 10 years. Uh, like perhaps many others, I did not start in payroll. I rolled into it. <laughs> um, I'm, I've actually have a degree in business administration that would allow me to set up my own hotel if I would like to. Uh, but after graduating, um, I started in a temp job. And there was a mistake in my payroll and I went and asked for it. And the answer they gave me wasn't really satisfactory to me. So I did a little bit of my own <laughs> investigation, my own little uh, detective work and uh, found out that I actually really like the numbers, the legislation, the ruling. So I got myself educated at home. Uh, after my 40 hour work week, uh, I've got the chance in local Dutch payroll. And then when, uh, when it happened, I got my chance to go into international payroll. And uh, I've been there ever since. Um, my mother used to say, uh, out of all of her children, I would be the one most likely to go either international or abroad. So she she got me there. I'm in international payroll and my wife is British. So, uh, yeah, two for two, I guess. <laughs> and that's a little bit about myself and uh, my career. Perfect. I, I, I like how you ended up in payroll because your own pay slip was kind of... Uh, had an issue so that's a very that's sort of very personal connection to you know have the have the motivation and the interest to dig deeper and you know really learn more about it um yeah. and um yeah a lot of times when you have that very personal experience um you develop the the strongest passion for you know changing something about it um talk about changing changing things so I usually like to do a little bit of research about the guests um, that we bring on the show. And I saw on, uh, I think it was on your LinkedIn profile where you talked about being very process driven, I think were the words that you were using. And uh, I think you mentioned how that helps you to see um, 
opportunities for change and improvement and development um, in the payroll department. So I was curious if you can tell us a bit more about that, um, the process driven and how that sort of helps you to uh, impact the payroll. Absolutely. I mean, you know, pay payroll is very, um, is very structured. Um, you know, you have a calendar. If you don't have a calendar, I always ask the person saying, how, how do you do a payroll calendar, with a payroll without a calendar? Uh, it's very structured, organized. I like structure. I like organized. I like processes. Um, I always tend to say to my payroll teams, uh, there's always five pillars recurring every single month in a payroll cycle. Cool. And that's your input, your output, uh, your payments, your journal, and then your aftercare, like taxes, social security, employee questions, and then the cycle starts over. Yeah. Um, within those processes, um, you know, payroll is linked to different departments. So uh, payroll gets their data from HR, benefits, tax, uh, TNA data, uh, employees himself, themselves. Uh, within those, you also have processes, whether that is manual processes, Excel sheets, our favorite, Google Sheets, or automated integrations, um, they're all process related. And uh, having a process driven mindset, it helps me um, providing advice to clients or payroll teams or payroll departments, uh, if there are any improvements in the processes, uh, having the bigger picture, not only focusing on payroll, but also so on your HR input, on your um, benefits input, see where the gaps are, see how we can, you know, make it more efficient. Uh, not necessarily there are gaps in processes, but you can always find a more efficient way to do it. Or um, I don't tend to, to use a, the, the word better you, because my way is not the best way, but, um, you know, there are always ways to do things more efficient and I like efficiency. Payroll is very efficient. So um, having a process driven mindset, having that bigger picture um, will help me as a consultant to advise clients of any gaps in the process. How can we make it easier for you, more efficient for you so that mm -hmm. you can spend your time on the nicer part of payroll and the nicer part of being working in payroll than solving a recurring issue. Um, there's no one size fits all approach. I can't say this is a process, this should work for your, your company because all companies, all payroll teams, all clients are different. Um, so you really have to see what, um, you know, what is the best way to optimize uh, the process within that payroll department or within the company. Yeah, um, no, absolutely. Uh, and, and, and just on that point of, I think you said pay payroll ought to be, wants to be efficient. Um, and, you know, in, in, in our experience, we come, come across clients that, you know, operate in, in, you know, with different starting points, different complexities. Um, and, and you're working now as a consultant and you've worked in different um, multinational organizations. In your experience, um, and I know it's probably a little hard to, Generalized, but do you typically see that organizations tend to operate in their payroll environment? Um, because, like you said, payroll obviously doesn't operate in a vacuum. There's lots of other departments that that are um, that are adjacent and also involved. But the payroll teams, do you find they operate kind of to a very high standard uh, of you know process maturity and efficiency, or um, do you typically find that it's not as maybe it's sophisticated or developed as you're or we all are observing in other parts of the organization? I've seen, um, I've seen multiple um, uh, organizations with multiple levels of um, maturity of their payroll processes. And, um, you know, when, when you see um, a company grow rapidly, more rapidly than they have ever thought they would grow during COVID or, or <laughs> then, um, it might be that your back end processes like payroll uh, are still lagging behind. So you can have your maturity in there. You can have more efficient processes uh, in place, even if it starts with 
you know, setting up a simple checklist um, for the payroll team, uh, just to make sure that you have your uh, backup in place. Um, if somebody falls ill or on holiday, you want to be able to run your payroll as normal so somebody can pick up where you left off. Um, but even in companies where I've been that have already a very mature um, payroll process, um, it's always it cannot hurt uh, to do like your car, like a yearly annual MOT or your yearly fitness check, just to do a check whether it can be more efficient. Um, mm -hmm. You know, talk to the teams, uh, talk to the people who work day in, day out with the processes. Um, see what their their issues are, and uh, try and find more efficient ways um, to make their work more easier, more efficient. Uh, and if you start small, start small, then but remain to have the bigger picture because some you know you have to have the bigger picture. You have to have your process view, your process driven view, in order to make those links, in order to make people's life a lot easier. Because sometimes. It doesn't, it ends with payroll, right? It doesn't start with payroll, usually. Right, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yes, I've seen um, companies that can mature a lot by standardizing uh, and harmonizing uh, processes. Whether you are globally or local, it doesn't really matter. You can still, in my opinion, you can still standardize uh, your processes. Um, to make them work for you. You should never fight against processes. And sometimes I see companies fight against their processes. And then I say, it's time to, th to think different. It's time to act different and mm -hmm. start um, having those processes work for you instead of against you. And then uh, with a more mature company, do an MOT, do your fitness check yeah. to make sure that uh, it still works for you. I, I like that suggestion because it's, I, I think it's very um, natural that in the heat of the battle of, you know, every month you need to get that payroll process and you need to get, get people pay, paid on time um, to, you know, not find the time or not push yourself to step back and evaluate how you're doing things, right? You just keep crunching through it and crunching through it. So doing that um, MOT or health check or, um, and I'm curious in your, in your consulting roles, do you, there might be people out there that say, no, that sounds very interesting, but how do I know how healthy or sick I am, right? What's the, what's the benchmark? Are there some checklist checkpoints where you say, okay, if you're, I don't know, still processing you know this part of your payroll operations manually then you know you're probably not with the times or something like that right are there certain or are you maybe aware of certain um resources tools that are out there that would allow someone to do a health check on themselves well the good thing of the company i work with now payroll minds um is that you can always approach us to help you do a mature check, to help to see the processes, to see where you can be more efficient. I do know that um, um, I think one of the before uh, has tools to check your maturity on payroll. How, how are you in the benchmark? Uh, where are you in the processes? Um, so that could help people as well. But a company like mine um, can definitely um, uh, like payroll minds can definitely help clients um, see whether there are indeed uh, a fitness check needed um, and give pointers because that's all you want, right? You want pointers to see where are we? What are the, what is the benchmark? Uh, what should we do? And there's great material out there yeah. um, from other payroll professionals as well. Exactly. Yeah, I always, I always like to say, you know, talk to your peers. And I think a lot of people are quite uh, plugged into sort of the, the payroll community and do that. Um, but if you're not, uh, I think that's a great, a great way of learning how other people are managing some of the same challenges that you might be facing, right? Um, exactly. And you, you, you got to learn from your peers as well. They can give you, you know, um, you don't have to invent the wheel. So right. why, why do you invent the wheel if you have a whole community behind you to help you out? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ab- absolutely. So, talking about the community and not being on your own, um, you already said something that I want to pick up on. You said uh, payroll tends to be sort of um, at the end of the process. And um, we recently had Thomas Emmerich from um, PowerXL on, on our talk show, and he said something uh, that, that, that very much goes also to that point. He's, he's, the way he described it is that payroll is the last line of defense um, within, within the organization. And I think you know, the way, the way um, I kind of understand that is there's obviously lots of other constituents that are involved in getting employees paid properly, um, but payroll tends to be you know, that last um, department, the last function before the payment goes out, before the payslip goes out. So, you know, if you don't catch something that's, you know, not quite right, then then that's typically creates a situation with an employee. Um, and I'm curious, so obviously in that context, it's very important to have good integration, good alignment, good, good cooperation with these other functions, upstream functions, and you already mentioned some, you know, HR, time and attendance, benefits, and and, and so on. So, um, but it's not easy, right? In, in your experience, how do you achieve that sort of strong alignment? Um, what can you do to make sure that, um, yeah, everyone is sort of rowing in the same direction and is, you know, tightly connected with each other? Yeah, Th- Thomas is right. I mean, payroll, payroll is the last line of defense as... as- um, I, I, tend to, I tend to describe it as uh, we're the last train station, we're the end station before a payment hits. So right. if we catch it as the last line of defense or as the goalie, right? If you, if you talk uh, football, soccer, if it, the goalie, uh, yeah. before the ball gets into the goal, payroll does their checks, their validation. That's what we do good. That was, you know. But if we catch something... It's probably too late. <laughs> it's probably checked in the output or you know before the payroll hits. And um, I try to create awareness by setting up a governance model with the stakeholders, uh, providing them feedback on the monthly payroll, what has gone right, what has gone wrong, because not everything goes wrong. A lot of things goes right. Don't forget that. Um, but try to create awareness, try to create a good governance model. Uh, talk to your stakeholders. Um, I'm getting back into the process-driven mindset. If you understand the process behind it, if you see the link, the bridges that payroll has to other stakeholders, to the data that we're processing, either coming from HR, benefits, compliance, tax, global mobility, um, you have to have a strong stakeholder relationship Mm -hmm. uh, because what you don't want is an error in your payslip or an error in your employee because um, it can cause frustration, not only with the employee, between the departments as well. And that that is what you don't want. You want to form one front line uh, to get the same message out to the employee that even if there is a mistake, because mistakes happen, we're all human, right? Um, Together we'll sort it out to make sure that it is. But you have... um, you know, you have competing uh, priorities as well. So you have to, you know, communication is key. A strong communication, a good communication governance model, uh, being open with each other and being honest with each other with the good things and the bad things. It's like it's like a marriage. You have to have a good relationship to make it work, right? So um, what I've learned in my previous, in this company, in my previous companies is having a good relationship with your stakeholders and explaining them showing them the struggles, showing them what's happening from a payroll side, creating that awareness, that is key because then they will understand our point of view uh, and you can and be open to understand their point of view as well. And then you can work together to resolve it, uh, whether that is a change in process, whether that is um, more checks, more controls, it will happen in the end. It's just an open and honest communication, strong governance model, and um, uh, listen. Sometimes it's better just to listen. Mm-hmm. Do you, in, in the organizations that you've worked in or with, 
do you, do you see that kind of communication, which could be, I suppose it could be more informal, you know, just pick up the phone and talk to someone when you, you know, identify that something, something's not quite working uh, or more structured formal process like a, I don't know, monthly or quarterly um, stakeholder meeting. Do those things happen? Like, especially, I suppose, the kind of structured communication, is that, in your experience, quite typical that those communication forums exist? Or do we need to work on establishing those more? Um, I think the establishing the governance model is not a problem. I think that they have monthly recurring um, um, uh, meetings. Uh, the challenge that we have together is making those meetings efficient and effective. Uh, sometimes you can get lost, right? In a big agenda with lots of things. So how do you pinpoint what challenge you want to discuss? Um, so I think in, in all of the companies, we had a governance model internally, whether that is on a manager's level, um, on a monthly basis, whether that is on a day-to-day -day basis uh, between the teams, they do communicate, but communicating effectively and efficiently, that's something something quite different. So uh, I think the challenge and the improvements there would be how to effectively have those meetings mm -hmm. and have the result you want from those meetings. Have your, you know, your owners, uh, the next steps. Uh, and, you know, the challenge is it all comes on top of your day-to-day -day basis. <laughs> but if you can... If you can create uh, an open communication line, um, an informal way, but formalized, um, then um, uh, you can get through to the goals that you have, the results, resolving problems, resolving gaps in processes. It's just uh, the challenge is effective meetings because sometimes a meeting gets heated, arguments run, emotions run high. Um, that happens when payroll, uh, you know, when payroll uh, has an error or anything. But the, the key is to step back a little bit, try to find out, okay, but what's causing the problem, uh, and how can we fix that? Um, but of course, also maintain a good relationship with your stakeholders, and of course, providing the resolvement towards the employees. Absolutely, absolutely important. Um, ultimately, employees need to, you know, get a good, good. Uh, Good experience, right, and a good Absolutely. good service. Yeah, the employees um, are my biggest stakeholders. Uh, I want to pay everyone on time and accurately, and right. to get there, it takes a team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it takes a village to to get. Um, and talking about the the different departments and stakeholders, um, I, I've heard, you know, from talking with you and you know seeing some some of the things that you've published um, on social media. I think you have a quite distinct view on you know the role of payroll and kind of the position of payroll in the organization um, and you know to, to paraphrase I think your your view there is um, payroll should be a separate function and separate department and it should have a, a seat at the famous table whether it's you know the senior senior management or boardroom table it should have a voice um, and we're First, first of all, curious how you came to that view, because I'm sure it's shaped by your own personal experiences over the years of having worked in this function. Yeah, so uh, I've shared my point of view on this um, a few years back, and I got, uh, and again a month ago on LinkedIn, and the responses have been great. Um, so many acknowledge it. Um, other professionals have provided great food for thought, uh, another point of view, which I really appreciate. Uh, I've worked in, in payroll under finance and I've worked in payroll under HR, but it's, either, it's always either HR or finance. Uh, and I think when you look at um, the bridges that payroll has, the data input, um, not only the data input from your HR, from your benefits team, from your time and attendance team, but also the output going to finance, going to uh, tax, global mobility, compliance, legal, um, to produce the end product, 
right? For a pay slip for the employee, um, it has those bridges. So I think I am still a believer of payroll to be independent. It's no longer just HR or just under finance. You always have links towards HR payroll. Whether whether you're under HR, you have to deal with finance. Whether you're under finance, you have to deal with HR. Um, so I would I would really like to, to see payroll as an independent function and just say, yes, we are payroll. We're not under HR, we're not under finance, we're just payroll as a function, um, as a multidiscipline function, a true strategic business partner, um, and no longer a fragment of another department. Mm -hmm. um, we have a think, truly yeah. specialized skill set. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, to be working in payroll. And I think that that can be uh, recognized uh, as a function on its own. And maybe even um, a seat at the C-level uh, table in the future. Um, payroll as an independent function benefits in compliance, uh, best practices, um, and even better separation of duties. Uh, because separation of duties can be messy sometimes if you're under HR or if you're under finance. Yeah. Um, payroll is intertwined uh, um, between um, many departments uh, and as a contributor. Um, so I would, yeah, I really would love to see payroll as an independent function. Um, but one of the one of my LinkedIn connections mentioned um, setting up a department has costs, overhead. Uh, pooling payroll resources within HR finance uh, comes natural right now. And that, yeah, she's she's right. That is true. Uh, payroll is not there yet, but um, you know what? Global payroll is evolving. Uh, the function is evolving and you never know it might happen. And when it happens, I will be the first one to uh, follow the progress, to learn from it and track its progress for the future. Um, I mean, the strength in payroll lies within its data. Mm -hmm. uh, and from this data, whether it is chrono chronological, uh, geographical, demographical, functional, um, I think payroll can be a real um, asset and value to have that strategic insight uh, at a board meeting or at a, a C-level table. So, yeah, I know, uh, I'm uh, very passionate about it. Um, that's why I love about working in payroll. It's not just numbers. Uh, you always have the different bridges, different views, different point of views. But um, who knows? Maybe, maybe in the future. But uh, yeah, no, payroll definitely independent. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think a lot of people um, resonate with that vision. And you know, as you as you describe, you know, for better or worse, in many organizations, we're not we're not quite there yet. Oh no! Yeah. That of course then leads to to the question. I don't know if there's a, a straightforward answer, but um, what what can payroll professionals do? Is there something that you know um, we as payroll practitioners could or should be doing in order to um, you know promote uh, advance the payroll function to be a separate function from HR or uh, from finance? I think, you know, get invited into the meetings up front. Um, if you hear something, you know, put your finger in and say, hey, I have a great uh, idea or I have, an, um, you know, um, insights in opening up a new country in that, in, that, uh, 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 in that region or have you thought of this? Have you thought of that? Um, be proactive. I mean, payroll used to be seen as a very reactive um, um, department, right? Um, we get data, we wait for the data, we process it, and then, but, you know, we can be proactive. Proactive in saying, hey, payroll's here to give advice. Uh, have you seen this data? Have you seen that data? If you're looking for into that benefit, this is beneficial for, um, um, for the company. If you look at it this way, um, so yeah, be proactive, get your, you know, get invited to those meetings, say, Hey, have you thought of this? Have you thought of this? Um, 
Uh, I think that's that's the only thing that we can do right now, apart from, of course, keep doing what we're doing, making sure that pay, people get it, uh, paid on time and accurate as accurate as possible. Um, but I think uh, proactiveness is uh, key and um, um, assisting and uh, providing the company with its data that they need to make those strategic um, um, decisions, make sure that they know that that data is coming from payroll, then you will get hurt. But yeah. keep trying, keep keep being proactive. I like I like that point a lot because I think um, I think both in the perception from other stakeholders, as you said, um, traditionally I think payroll is seen as um, a more reactive function. So you have to work extra hard to uh, not get uh, you know put into that bucket of well, that's just you know the 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 last last step in the process and uh you know they'll just figure it out um and it, it probably takes takes for you know payroll professionals also a little bit of getting out of the comfort zone like you know in many things where you know if you're not used to it or if other people are not you know re used to thinking about you that way um you need to push yourself a little bit and say um like you said, listen, I want to be in that meeting or I have a view on this. I think I have, you know, something that I can contribute and be, you know, be vocal about it. And we're all very passionate about payroll, right? So be passionate about what you're doing and bring that passion to the rest of the organization. I think it's a very good point. I like that. Um, which would sort of, I, I think, ties into um, my, my last question is more broad on, um, the, the journey that we're all on, right, in, in payroll. And the big question I think we're, you know, uh, asking ourselves every now and then is, where is this all going, right? Um, what, what's the future for payroll? Um, and many different views, many different dimensions to payroll. But I'm curious, you know, when you sort of close your eyes and think about, okay, you know, what's happened in your own experience over the last five, 10 years working in payroll. And if you think ahead of, you know, where do I think this will lead us to in the next five to 10 years? What do you see? What does Katinka Slafers see payroll become or evolve into? Well, when I started in payroll, you already had Excel spreadsheets and you already had automated platforms to run payroll. Uh, when I talk to my managers, when I talk to, you know, my, my coaches in the past, they always um, go back, oh, in the past, we still had the, 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 the little notes with your hours on, you had to place it in and you got paid. And if you hear those stories, you already know payroll has evolved quite a bit, but I think payroll is still evolving. And I think in five to 10 years, I guess payroll will be mostly touchless because of the RPA processes, integrations, automations. Um, however, the main reason I really love working in payroll and in international payroll is the human factor in it. Um, will the profession change? Absolutely. We will need to adapt, learn new things. Um, even if you're a number cruncher, you might want to be interested, you might want to get interested in the integration part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, how does the integration work with those numbers? Because as I said, RPA processes, artificial intelligence, it will, it will become part of our journey. Um, so we will need to adapt, grow, change with the times. Um, and I think change with the profession as well. But um, the human factor in it all, I don't think we're going to lose our jobs because you always have the human factor. You always have questions from employees, always have to have somebody that pushes that button, <laughs> uh, to, be, to, to, be, to be honest. That's the right answer. To <laughs> exactly. But um, yeah, um, it will become more and more automated, more and more uh, integrated, or, you know, using RPA processes, artificial intelligence uh, that can help the profession. But, um, you know, adapt, grow and change with the profession. And I think we'll still be here in five to 10 years. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> 
<laughs> pay, pay, payroll protection is not going away, um, but yeah, absolutely it, not. <laughs> it will it will definitely uh, look quite different, and technology will be um, you know a factor, a big impact on that. Exactly. Um, so, Katika, before we finish up, uh, what we'd like to do is something that we call the lightning round, okay. where I will ask you a set of questions and we'll have you answer them with whatever comes to mind first. Um, and uh, we'll learn, learn a bit more about you that way. Um, you ready? I'm ready. Okay. When you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? Oof. Um, I don't think I can remember, but um, I don't think it was anything with numbers. So uh, I'm, I'm doing something totally different. <laughs> so clearly you have pushed yourself out of your comfort zone. Into exactly. Something yeah. That, that stand at your horizons. Um, wh what do you believe are the essential qualities of a payroll professional? Zen. Remain calm within deadlines. <laughs> I like that. Um, None of the sort of like function, hey, you did be good with numbers, or, but Zen is very good. Absolutely, but you also have yeah, Zen, nice. <laughs> internal Zen, because otherwise <laughs> deadlines, yeah. Very nice. Um, what, talking about Zen, what gives you most satisfaction about your job? Um, helping people, helping organizations, helping people, answering questions just to get that say, yeah, thank you. I know your answer is not nice, but thank you for trying to explain it to me and thank you for your assistance in that. And that can be from an employee, that can be from uh, the director of finance, or that can be from an organization. So just to be able to help people. Yeah. As you said, it's, it's still very much a people's role, right? Running and, and being involved in payroll. Um, yeah. When you don't have Zen, when your mind is overloaded, what do you do then? How do you, how do you unwind? I think you already answered part of that in your introduction. Um, uh, I, I picked up the, the um, detective stories, but uh, is there anything else that you do um, in order to relax when you're feeling stressed and overloaded? Um, yes, like I said, uh, crime novel. It's just a way to uh, get my brain to think about something else, get my brain to think about a different puzzle. But I like to spend time with friends and family and uh, have drinks um, and just talk about, you know, the weather and bees and, you know, the news and stuff. Just just normal all today, day to day uh, activities. Perfect. Um, and then uh, you already mentioned you're a, um, a new mom. Um, and I know your daughter is still quite small, um, uh, but if you were to explain, maybe in a few years, right now might be a bit too early, but if you were to explain to her what payroll is all about, how would you do that? Um, that is, yeah, that is quite a question. Um, I think payroll is about making sure that people get paid what they're entitled to. Um, that's, that's the foremost thing that payroll does. Um, mm -hmm. But with that comes working with the most craziest people in the world in the payroll team um, and other stakeholders as well, just to make sure that the processes to get to the end product are as good as possible. So I think that is something, I think I would explain it like that. And yes. yeah, the geek in me would say, we love legislation and rules, making sure that you understand um, uh, your payroll. Not only, yes. I mean, what I do, I love what I do. Not only do I know the Dutch payroll, I get to know other payrolls as well. I get to know how other people feel in other countries and uh, not, not everyone can say that. So yeah. I, I like the legislation behind it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's a nice way of thinking about it. I, I guess it does allow you, if you're kind of, you know, taking a, a positive view on it, uh, it, it has, gives you glimpses into other countries, cultures and mindsets. Right? Yeah. The world is so big. The world is so big. It's, it's, and 
it's like you said, I really like that. It gives you an insight in the culture of different uh, countries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, that brings us to the end of, of this episode. Uh, before we wrap up, Katinka, any, any shout outs, anything you want to leave people with before we go? Um, I just want to mention a shout out to everyone that I've worked with, that I'm working with right now and that I've worked with in the past. Um, thank you for keeping up with me. Uh, thank you for teaching me every single day and pushing me. My coaches uh, are, are pushing me every single day to do, you know, to do what I can to learn and adapt and change and grow. Um, but certainly not the least, a massive shout out to every one of us, every single payroll professional out there. Um, you're doing a great job. And don't forget that when pay date is around the corner, give yourself a pat on the back because we're doing awesome. Amen. Um, well, well said. <laughs> I think it's a, it's a great point. Um, very good. Well, Katinka, thank you so much for coming on the show um, and sharing your, your story and your experiences and your, your passion about payroll uh, with us. Uh, really enjoyed that. Um, so, and thank you very much for everyone who uh, listened to this episode. Um, you can find more about Plug and Pay on our um, YouTube channel, on our LinkedIn page, uh, as well as on the major podcast sites. If you like what you're hearing, if you like this episode, um, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and that way we can make sure that you uh, can follow some of the future episodes as well. Um, and that's really it for today. Thank you again for being with us and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Take care.